Next up, uh, very important are the start and end date written down correctly. So start and end date of your employment, right? Typically ESL contracts, they're um, for one year or sometimes also two years. So the date needs to be written down and not only like uh, the month, but also really month and day, exactly what day it starts and when it ends. So for example, in this contract, this is, is this also Korea? Mm, doesn't say, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where it is, but here it would, it should say it somewhere like this. So period of employment from March 1st, 2013 to February 28th, 2014. So that's a one year contract. So that's typically what it looks like. And this is very important because in a lot of countries you pay, for example, taxes. And in Korea, you pay into the pension scheme. And when you leave, you get the money back. Um, not in all the countries and not for everyone, but in a lot of instances. So it's very important for taxes, for like any kind of benefits, bonuses, um, severance pay. So it's very important to have the exact date on the contract. Um, and then it should also, it's also stated later on here in this paragraph, as you can see, it says the employee will commence his or her employment on March 1st, 2013. The employment will continue to February 28th, 2014, unless terminated sooner as provided herein and for such further period as provided for herein subject to the following conditions. And we're actually going to talk about this part in just a bit. So is the start and end date written out correctly? And also one thing to note, um, the start date and the end date are not the same as your arrival and departure date, typically, right? You're going to arrive earlier than the start date, right? If you start on March 1st, you're probably already going to arrive in February, maybe a week earlier or two weeks before, it's kind of gonna depend on that, right? It's it's obviously you're not gonna arrive and then start teaching right away, right? Typically, so that's not gonna be, your flight will be earlier than that. That's what I'm trying to say. And also you're probably gonna be leaving later than that, right? Your last day is February 28th, but maybe you're just changing schools, you're staying longer, maybe you will um, extend your contract uh, but then you're going to get a new contract um, or, you know, you're going to move to a different city, things like that. So just keep that in mind. All right. Got a comment here. Let's have a look at that from Gordon. Having been teaching internationally for some years now, I can categorically say that not one contract I have had was followed by the school. Don't expect your contract to be followed. Go into each with a very, very open mind. Do as much due diligence. Do diligent as you can. Read sites like ISR. Yeah, good point. Of course, contracts, you know, um, should be followed by both parties. But um, sometimes, yeah, there might be an issue. You know, it's not they don't follow it or you don't follow it 100% how it's written. Um, yeah, that's, it also depends on where you teach, I feel like, and what type of school. Uh, typically, if you work for any one of those government funded programs like Epic or the JET program, they pretty much, it's all how it is in the contract, but private schools, yeah, they, in a lot of schools, they are actually looking for loopholes, right? What they can do to just for their benefit. So that's also very important that you, that's why it's very important that you need to read your contact contract through very thoroughly. So, but yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Gordon. <laughs> all right. Good, that's that about the start and end date, very important. Thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.